today we're going to turn this napkin into a canvas painting using painting technique and decoupage technique. So stay with me and I'll show you how to turn that into that and this is an easy beginner project. Today I'm going to produce on an 8 by 8 inch or a 20.4 centimetre by 24.4 centimetre canvas panel I'm going to produce a painting and this is for people who aren't artists who can't draw and uh, can't do all this intricate shading and that sort of thing we're going to use this little cute little kitten napkin from Ninny's Napkins if you want to know any of the details about how to get this napkin just check in the description below this video and there'll be a link and also a discount code I'm going to use this napkin to produce a painting on here so there will be some painting and some gluing so stay with me to see how this is done first thing I need to do is put a background in here and I've decided that this will have like a blue sky behind it and some green grass down the bottom here so we're going to put that on first and then we're going to add our napkins now to start with I have water I have a paintbrush I have some paint I've got some green some white and some blue and I don't throw away my old towels I cut them up and I use them for rags they're great for painting they're great for cleaning off the paintbrush you're not damaging the environment you're recycling something instead not wasting paper and trees old rags and I can use them over and over again I can even wash them and keep using them until they actually completely fall apart so they're handy now and I have a spray bottle too so that you know if I want the canvas a little bit damper for the water to be running up or if I want the water that I, the paint that I'm going to put down here to uh, not dry out as quickly I will um, spray it with a little spray so I'm going to start first of all with some paint now I'm going to spray a little bit of water on here just to make the surface a bit damper and I'm going to start by mixing up a lighter version of that blue you can use any blue you like the blue I'm using is a Joe Sonia and it's called Harbour Blue but you can use whatever you like it's an acrylic paint so I've got a nice really light version there but I might put a little bit of dark on first and just start brushing it on Put some of the light version in there as well maybe some white in there as well so you, the sky is not perfectly all one color it's a bit mottledy might be some clouds happening or something I wanted to get a lot lighter as it gets down towards the um, the kittens so that they s stand out a bit but there might be a couple of little bits of dark here and there just to create interest make it interesting not, not all dull and boring all one colour is dull and boring I'm suggesting you um, mix it up a bit And you might want to come along and um, just um, get your edges done too it's up to you. you might want to come and do them in a different color later on after it's dried and if you don't like this that's exactly what you could do well, if you know what that's like you what you want well do it straight away There we are. 
now there's my edges done and we're getting down here now how far do the kittens go up about there so I'm probably now going to start wanting to put a bit of green in now that I've got down here and I'm going to start with um, I'm going to white put a lot of white across there and then mix the green in with the white and I'll start with the lighter green I can blend that up too so that it doesn't um... now I'm going to start down here I'm going to make that a bit whiter there a bit, I'm going to make that a bit watery there more watery now And just if you've got too much of any particular colour on your brush, just wipe it off with the rag and then come back again with whatever colour you want on there. I don't want that that dark, so I'm just going to add some white to this here. Now I might get those over those edges done. Clean that brush off again. And come back with some of that white again in here. Now if if it's not as light as you'd like another way to do this would be to come back once it's dry because once it's dry you can add anything on top and you will hide what's underneath now I'm going to come back with a, um, a brush that's got no paint in it clean it off completely so when you wipe it now still a bit of green there so you've got to keep wiping it until you get all the green out and then I'm going to just blend this a bit make it a bit blurry on this edge here and blur this in a bit okay so now we've got our background in and I'll dry that with a dryer and then I'll be back. Now before I add any more to this background I'm going to work out exactly where I'm going to position these kittens. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the quarter of the napkin I want. Now I want the napkin with the kitten on that side and I'm going to cut around the kittens so I get an exact of where the kittens go now don't worry about the little hairy bits that fluff off the edge going around them just go through them and um, you can add a li the little fluffy bits off the edge after you've uh, finished painting if you just want the kitten to look a little bit more fluffy with some fine line work the bees will be in the picture, but I'm going to cut them around them too and add them later. The kittens I'm worried about at the moment. And I want to get right on that brown edge. I don't want any white off the edge because if there's any white showing, then you're going to have to paint it out. Now there's lots of napkins that have a big animal or something in the middle. Might be a tomato, who knows. But whatever it is you want to do a picture of, there's lots of napkins in Ninny's range that would lend themselves to this if you start looking. So if you're not into kittens, you might be into something else that will you could do a similar thing to. Now I like the little purple flowers in this too, but I'm not going to cut those out. I'm actually going to paint those and I'll show you an easy way to paint them into the picture. Because they're not hard to do. This is basically a beginner project. Now here is where it gets a bit tricky because there's a flower there. So I'm just going to cut straight across and I'm going to work out roughly where I want these 
kittens to be sitting. This kitten would have a paw up in the air and I don't want to draw that paw so I'm going to have these kittens coming out from that edge and I'll just add some more flowers over this side so that we don't have to put the kitten paw in. And I want some of that green showing behind the kitten as well. Probably bring them up a little bit higher. It's really like it's all personal preference here. It's not an exact science. So there roughly is where I want these kittens on this picture. And then I'm going to have some of these things coming over this way. Maybe one up that way and then some of these coming out from here and then some of those little things down there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a pencil and just draw around underneath the kitten to give me an idea of where the kitten's going to sit. I don't want to draw out from the edge because I don't want this pencil line to show on the painting. So I get my pencil under here. Find out why in a minute. If you use your hand to hold the napkin down while you're doing this, it's not going to move on you. This has still got all the um, layers on it. It's sturdier for me pushing it around when it's got all the layers on it. So now I can see where those kittens go. And I'll bring that up so you can get a closer look of where the kitten goes. Now I'm going to paint in the grass and the flowers and I know roughly that I don't want this all covered up here because that's where the kitten goes so let's have a look at what we're going to do I need some lavender and purple so that is oh wood violet that one's called and this one is lilac so there's my pinky purpley colors and uh, I've got my greens and my white and that's all I need just put that on there and look at it and think about it for a minute but basically what I want to do is have a little thing like that coming up there so I'm just going to with my fine line see I've got a, a liner brush you can get that's called a rigger that's called a liner you could use either and you would put a lot of water in it and then you can just put it down and there's your line quite easy to do and I might have some coming over this way too. I might have one coming there and one going up that way. A couple coming out of the corner here. Just to give me an idea of where I want to put those flowers that are like this. Now you can choose where you put them. They don't have to be in the same spot I put them. And then we're going to have some foliage coming up this way as well. So some of these little things. So what I might do is just put a few across the bottom. And maybe I'm going to mix a bit of dark and light for that. So it's a different colour to these ones. So I know which is which. And we might have some that come and right up to and including where the kitten is and it could look like grass as well some of these are going to be short some are going to be long they're not all going to be in the same direction they're going to go in different directions and it's going to look as though there's grass there too i'm adding more water to my brush too just to give it a more fluency as though I want it to have plenty of paint in it that will keep going. See how much stronger that is than that. And that's because I added more water and more paint. And see, I'm getting a much more strong line of colour. Now, I'm going to add some yellow to this because... So there's some yellow. That is called yellow orange, actually. It's probably... I would prefer more a yellow, golden yellow than an orange yellow, but that's all i got here at the moment, so that's what I'm using. And it just adds, see, a, just a bit more highlight in there, as though there's another colour coming through. And a bit more interest. And you can play with this for as long as you want. You don't have to stop at a few strokes you can get this whole area filled in if you want and have it really thick with grass 
or you could just go for just a few strokes and, and make it minimalist. It's up to you how you do this. I like probably lots more grass and you need to bend some of it around a bit. I just wanted to get them in before I got this in because I don't want it to get too messy onto these kittens. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to now paint this area white because where I stick the kittens, I don't want any colour under them. So now I need to paint this area white. So I'll just get my little brush again and... We're going to paint this whole area and then I'll have to dry it right on the pencil edge. So cover the pencil, but only just cover it. This doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to hide the background. And you might find, depending on what brand of paint you're using and what quality of paint you're using. If you're using a student grade paint you might need to come back and do a second coat or if you put it on too thin you might need to come back and do a second coat. So just dry one coat first and then come round and get the second coat on. I came back and put a second coat on there and I also felt I'd gone out too far with the white there so I added a little bit of blue over the top. I'm going to take the layer off these kittens and put them into position exactly over the white so there's no white showing. Now we've got the kittens in position. I've got my watered down Mod Podge. The reason my Mod Podge is watered down is because mine's is old and it's gone a bit sticky. What I need to do is make sure these are as well positioned as possible the least white showing as possible. I'm going to start up here and I'm going to let that go all the way through. Yep, and look I've messed it up. Alright, too late, can't lift it up now. So you'll see what to do if you make that mistake. So I'll have to show you. Now I don't mind if I get glue over my paint. It's not a problem because it will dry clear anyway. Let's just get these little kitten bits all the way down and glued on so that you make sure that there's no edges that are going to lift. Go all the way around those edges, make sure that there's nothing that's going to lift and get those kittens nice and pressed down. There's no wrinkles left or as few wrinkles as possible and that every little bit of that kitten is glued down firmly on the surface. Now, really when you're looking at this close up like I am, it's hard to see the difference and it will be even harder once we touch up the edges. Don't uh, keep brushing too long though because this tissue is actually very um, delicate now and could easily tear. So. Once it's wet, it's very delicate and you've just got to be very gentle. That's why you always use a soft bristle brush. And I like to use a flat brush that's rounded like that, which is called a filbert because there's no sharp edges to push into the napkin. Now that, I think, needs a little bit more glue on because it looks like it's slightly lifted there. So I'll push a bit of glue under the edge and then brush it down but everything else looks as though it might be right now see how bright those kittens are they would not be that bright if there was white now I'll show you where there's not white see how it looks a little blue under that kittens foot there see how it looks a little green under these kittens feet here that's where the white has stopped you can see where the edge of the white is so that's why it's so important to try and get this accurate. You can actually see it here too. It's a little bit darker there. So um, the kitten, because the kittens come off the edge there, it's a little bit bluer there, but you know, it's no biggie. Um, people who are looking at this are not going to say, oh, that should have been whiter there, or that should have been whiter there. They're just going to look at the whole thing and look at the kittens and go, oh, aren't they cute? 
So now we let that glue dry. One of the things we could do is get this little liner brush and some white and some of that blue and mix it down to whatever colour that blue is there. So you just either keep adding more dark or more light until you get the colour that's there and you to brush it in and you can wipe it out with your fingers to make it look like it's going into whatever else is happening there. And I'm just going to make that a little bit darker and then brush it out okay and then just leave it like that there's some that's looking white along there too so I'm going to get some of this blue here and come along that edge too just make it a little bit darker and then wipe out and that's what you do to get rid of your your, your white bits okay now I'm going to come back with this uh, big rigger brush again and we're going to do more grass so that it comes over the kittens. Not too much, just a little bit so that it looks like they're in the grass. So I might just do a couple of strokes with this, this colour. And so it'll look like some of the grass is going behind the kitten because all the grass that stops there is actually behind the kitten. And this grass, which must come up from the bottom, is going to look as though it's in front of the kittens. And go find where the gaps are in the grass and add these to the gaps. And what I mean is the gaps down here, if there's no grass in a spot, that's where you bring that grass up from. And now these kittens are starting to look like they're laying in the grass and they're part of the picture. And if you see where else you think you need some more grass, just add some of that and do some turned bits in funny directions so that all your grass isn't laying in the same direction. Now I'm just doing it in one colour at the moment but then I'll come back and do the same thing in a different colour. I'll Maybe I'll mix that and that together so to get a mid-tone. It's not as dark as that but it's not as light as that. And then I'll put a couple of those in as well and have some of those bending over as well so that the grass is not looking perfectly symmetrical and straight. You could even have some wavy bits if you wanted. All right, and then we might come back with this yellow green and put a bit of that in then. Mix the yellow and the green together so that it's lighter than that but not as yellow as that. And we'll just have a couple of those coming through too. There we are. Now the kittens are sitting in the grass. Now let's look at these flowers and the first flower we're going to look at is this one here and that I think has got all these there's these flowers branching out from little stems so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some very fine stems that hopefully you really won't see but I'm just going to bring them out in different directions short and long and we're going to put some flowers off the end of those so but don't let them be all the same direction don't let them be all the same length you want short ones and long ones you don't want it really thick so I'm starting from the stem and going out so that it gets thinner the further out it gets and don't make it perfectly even either okay so that's where they're going to go now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do with the same brush I'm going to get some wood violet and what we're going to do is get on the end of one and we're just going to flick out in each direction I'm making this as easy as possible for you and while they're drying I might put a little short one in here and notice I'm coming from the stem out in all directions four or five leaves it's up to you and then we'll come over here and do the same sort of thing I'm just using the tip of the brush only. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So you could practice on the piece of paper first if you wanted to. They don't all have to be the same size either. The petals could be shorter or longer. Now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of that and some of that together to get a different colour. And I'm going to come back to the first flower because they should be almost dry now yes they are almost dry so now I can come back and do the same thing here with this now there's too much paint on that so I need to roll it now there won't be one flower for every stem 
the stems that are left that don't have flowers on will just look like background. And have an uneven amount of those flowers too, not all the same. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to this colour now. your flower too and see if it sort of looks semi round if it's not looking round in one spot add a bit more of a flower to that side even if there isn't a stem going out to it now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with even a lighter color again so I'm going to take that and I'm going to add white to it so that I've got a really pastel version of this color and they can go over the top of the previous flowers you know you need some depth you want it to look as though it's um got flowers in behind and stems in behind so you know you add bits and pieces here there and everywhere fill it in more you can come back and add other colors if you want to to make it look as though it's got more flowers in that and look as though there's hardly any background behind it and there's my little flowers and i'm just going to leave it at that and you might want to, it's up to you, but you might want to come back and say dot a centre in with a little dotting tool or the end of your paintbrush. You might want to come back. This is an easy way to do it. And just put a little dot in the centre. That would be the easiest way to do this. Like that. Um, and that just gives it a little bit more depth again. I'm putting that out there so that I don't get as much paint on it. You could have done this in white too. It didn't have to be this dark. You could have made the dots white centers or yellow centers. It's up to you. Any of the colors you've used on this painting could have been used as a center. I'm not making all the dots the same size either. The more you dot with the end before you dip back in the paint, the smaller the dot will become. So it allows you to have different size dots on the flowers. Don't panic if you don't get the dot in the right place either, because when they're looking at the whole thing, they're not going to see every little, every little flower and every little dot as um, individual. Now, they're not exactly the same, but they're cute. Now, these other little flowers here, are actually very rounded on the end and each petal is not necessarily all the same color these are pointy on the end these are rounded on the end and they've got some blue and purple and lavender mixed in so we might mix up a light shade of blue and a light shade of purple and we've already got the light shade of lavender and that's what we're going to do these ones in and I'm just going to put some yellow dots down first as to where I want these to be so there's going to be one there one there one there and then we're going to dot some through here too maybe one there not lots just an uneven amount and look some close together and some further apart and I think that might be enough. We'll just see once we've done the flowers. And I'm going to dry that yellow because I'm going to bring that uh, the colours in and then I'm going to re-dot the yellow over the top to make it on top. So I'm going to dry that first. Now I'm just going to use a small round paintbrush to do this. I'm not sure which one of these. I've got a couple of round ones and I'm just not sure which one I'm going to use yet because they've all they're all different ages and the, the ends are slightly different and I'm not sure what's going to give me the best end. Might be that one. Let's see. We'll start with this here. Yes, yeah, so I'm just, just going to do a little flat thing and it's going to come into the middle and some of them will have more than one 
pink petal and some of them will only have this light petal and some won't. The, some will have nearly all the flower, the light colour. And I'm just bringing them all into that yellow centre so I know where I'm going. Okay, so I've got that those bits in. Now I'm going to come back with the light blue and add them. Now this one was all light blue down here. And there's those little flowers. Now, I might put a couple over here, I think. What we do then is we come back with that dotting tool again and we re-put those yellow bits in again so that they stand up, stand out a bit more. There we are. There's the flowers. Now, the next thing we've got to look at is these bees and they're going to be difficult to cut out we're just going to cut the body and the wings out we're not going to try and cut around the legs and the antenna now when you've done that you can decide where you want your bees to go in the picture but that's where i'd probably have the bees now we just have to do exactly the same thing as we did with the uh, kittens and we need to just draw probably just where the bee body is. In fact, let's just make it easy on ourselves. Let's draw around the outside of that shape and we'll just paint it in because it's so fiddly. Now if you're competent in drawing you wouldn't need to cut out the bee and trace around it. But if you're not competent then that's what you do. There's that bee shape there and let's have a look at this one up here. Move him around to where we want him to be. Put that one back there so I get a better visual. And I think yeah because they're both looking at that bee there. So this one can be hightailing it out of there. Okay so that's that bee. And this is that bee. And you can just sit them beside there to help you. And then the first thing I would do is just get the yellow in. So this part of the bee here, we're going to make yellow. And make that yellow cover up the pencil line. And while that bit's drying, we'll do the yellow up here. Now the reason I'm doing the yellow first is because if you did it black, it's very hard to get yellow to cover up black. So it's easier to put black over yellow and it will cover it immediately. So if you're going to put the stripes in, you do the black stripes. Now while that's drying, we could get that really that blue and make it a really pale, pale blue. I'll just get a bit more white and make this blue over here an almost white blue for the wing. Because we don't want it the same colour as the sky. We need it lighter than the sky. So you've got that little bit there for that wing. And then you've got two wings over here. And if they're not light enough, you can always add more white to it. Okay, now this wing actually went onto the yellow. So that yellow, we need to dry a bit first so that that wing can go onto the yellow. Now that I've added a little bit more white to those wings so that it's more easy for you to see them. I'm going to um, add the black. Make sure that's dry, yes. And we're getting some reasonable amount of water in that so that I can get a good line without running out of paint but not too watery. And his little head is black there 
and then he has a stripe coming across here and he has a stripe going across his backside there and it's narrow there and wider at the back like that and then we have some little antenna coming and I'm just barely using the point of the brush there little antenna there and we've got a couple of little legs coming around there and a couple of little long legs coming there like that and there's the bee and I might make this a bit fuzzier so that I'm just putting just making it a little bit fuzzier by putting some little so the lines aren't so straight there. His head's straight, but the back bit's fuzzier. And if you wanted to, you could um, detail the wings too, if you wanted to, like that. So there's one bee. Now, what you would do is then this other bee, here he is. Now, this little bee has his head there. So we've got a little point there. There we have black coming across here and here like this. And then a little stripe across his bum there. That's right, like that. And then I, because I've gone around these wings, I'm just going to put a little bit of detail up in those wings as well. They're just very fine lines. And then do the same here. There, and then he had a couple of antenna going up that way. And a couple of legs, one sticking out there a little bit, and two coming down this way, there. And there's that little bee there, and that's all there is to it. So... Now I'm not sure if you can see this, but once I finished this, you can actually see in the sun, I'll try turning this light on and see if that'll show you, you can actually see a bit of a shimmer where the glue is as compared to where the, um, can you see the shimmer around there? You can sort of see a shimmer where the, just the plain paint is. So to make this picture look the same all over and to also give it protection, I'm just going to add, now that it's all completely dry, a, a coat of just my watered down Mod Podge over the whole thing. Just work my way out from the middle and just give this completely a coat all the way over so that the whole thing shimmers instead of just a couple of patches. And you need to turn it on the side so the light hits it so you can see where it's shimmery and where it's not. Just to make sure that you've got a total coverage. Because you don't really want to come back and have to redo it if you've missed a bit. And then Turn it over that side and let the light hit it on that side. And I also need to do the edge there. And just in case you've got, you know, you've gone over to the back a bit with these um, on the sides, I just get something round like that to sit it on to dry so that your uh, canvas doesn't stick to the table. Because even though this is a sealer, it's also a glue. Just make sure there's no ridges or lines left in the... It's just an even, flat 
surface there and then you just sit it there to dry. Now what I'm going to do is take this down and give you a close look at this little picture. Now you can't really tell by looking at it that the cats are a napkin and the rest is paint. I can tell by the quality of the work. The, the, paint, the cats to me are much better finish paint wise than the flowers. They're more naive. But then some people do put detail and naivety into the one picture. So there's our little picture. Have fun doing this one.